how I match the boys. <laughs> okay, so I'm doing a strand of cooperative learning which is called um, group investigation. So our learning objectives uh, are two. The learner will discuss the benefits of group investigation model and then we'll identify the six phases of the group investigation model as well. But we're going to start with, and I'm going through this uh, with, within the 5E um, model as well, framework. So on your table is a notepad. Um, if you want to just write down everything you can think that you know about cooperative learning. So I'm going to start with cooperative learning first, since that's the overarching um, framework or model. So write down everything you can think of that you know about uh, cooperative learning. And as partners? By yourself. Oh, Sorry. And I'm just going to give you guys two minutes. or it can even be anything related to cooperative learning. Give you guys another like 30 seconds. Start wrapping up your thoughts. Okay, so how we're going to do this by sharing is we're going to do a conga line. Has anyone done a conga line? Okay. No. okay. So you're going to stand and since, well, <laughs> there's only five of you. Um, I know, so I'm going to be the other match for, uh, so we're going to be partners. So, on the line, so there's three people on this line and three people on this line, and you're facing each other with your papers. And then you just need to, you need someone in front of you. And I'll pick whoever's left. Sam. <laughs> okay, so with your conga partner, you, you, you're going to share what you wrote down music. in your head. The music is in your head. <laughs> I said uh, it's social. Um, I said it's okay. Yeah, there is. Yeah, uh, it learns uh, just deployable skills instead of taking care of it. Similar to teamwork, but also small things. Peer feedback and partnership. Communication and focus discussion. I agree. Um, it's into the okay. uh, it's, it's a lot of the it's, uh, it's, 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 <laughs> I'm like, do you, do you need music? No. <laughs> you're it. Okay, so this row, this line right here, is going to go this way. Jonah, you're going to come around and swing this All way. All right. 
Same thing with your new partner. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, okay. accountability and responsibility okay so we're going to go through and specifically focus on group investigation um, since that is the strand that I am talking about um, so the teaks that we're going to do are related to 4.7 C so fourth grade identify and classify earth's renewable resources including air plants water and animals and non-renewable resources including coal oil and natural gas and the importance of conservation so I'm giving you a topic, which is resources, renewable, non-renewable, and conservation. And here's your overarching question. What can we do to prepare and keep our planet livable for the future generations? Okay, so that's our overall, overall question. What I want you to do is at your table, I want you to brainstorm, or David, you can actually join a table since you are by yourself, unless you really want to do this by yourself, you can't. It's up to you. I'm giving you a choice. Brainstorm and write down possible subtopics related to the resources. So we're talking about your topic is resources, renewable, non-renewable, conservation. Your question, though, is what can we do to prepare and keep our planet livable for future generations? So you need to think of subtopics like global warming. That's a subtopic of um, renewable and non-renewable and conservation specifically, okay? So think of subtopics that are related to that topic and or question. What can we do to keep this planet livable for future generations? Okay, global warming is one thing that focuses on that. Does that make sense what you're gonna do? Just subtopics. Okay, so just brainstorm with your group um, some ideas. Okay. <laughs> and I was going to say, you can put global warming, warming down, because that is one. And you can think like fourth graders if you want, or you can think like adults. Oh, that's going to be pushing my brain capacity. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Fourth graders might be a little easier than, you know. Uh, renewable energy. I'm going to be a fourth grader. That's good. Maybe an adult. Every now. In and out, that's okay. I might think I'm an adult. It's really a fourth grader. No, I think it's transportation. Let's see. Could be. Uh, that, could be about, uh, uh, that could be a number of things. Uh, uh, could be under uh, all, the all, the okay. mm -hmm. all the transportation, putting off all, all the sort of knocks and locks and so sort of Pollution, uh, CO2 All right, I'm going to give you guys like maybe like 30 more seconds. Probably not those. 
All right, start wrapping up your ideas. Okay, what I'm going to have you guys do is read through your list out loud for us. So, which table wants to go first? We will. Oh, oh. oh you go there. Rock, paper, scissors. Uh -huh. okay. no, we're kidding. <laughs> go I got rock. Um, we said uh, deforestation, nuclear power, um, water pollution, alternative or renewable energy, uh, extinction, air pollution, coal, carbon, and stop eating animals. <laughs> stop eating animals. Okay. <laughs> okay, can you guys read off of your list? And if you have the same thing that they have, just cross yours off. Okay. So sustainable engineering, uh, sometimes also called green engineering, renewable energy, uh, pollution control, CO2 reduction, uh, the increase of farming production, um, looking at GMOs, I'm just trying to remember what happened we Genetic modified organisms. Um, bioengineering for increased food, uh, sustainable ecosystems. Okay. Uh, that's what we're thinking about with the animals. With the not eating animals, so those yes. two can relate. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at your list, both of your lists, and we're going to pick the top three that you think would be the most interesting to learn more about. Okay, so as a, as a class, we need to pick three. Okay. So out of the list that we that we kind of shared, it sounded like well both groups had something to do with renewable energy was one. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I like it. Also, mm -hmm. the CO2 air pollution thing. You tell me which three you want to be. Yeah, and then we liked green engineering. We thought that sounded cool. Okay, that's worth it. Sounds fancy. You know, we're wearing green and stuff. <laughs> a lot of us are. I don't know who you are. Okay, so what? It, so what's one that you guys decided on? Green engineering. Okay. Yes. Sorry, I'm, I'm rating it in purple though. Sorry. Okay. Okay. What's another one that you guys decided? Renewable energy. Renewable energy. Need Sandra to come fast in order for this next part to work. <laughs> or Julie. I can be two people. Okay, last one that you guys decided on. Um, it was CO2 yeah. emissions, yeah. right? Yeah, reduction, yeah. reduction of CO2 emissions. Yeah. Or just air pollution. Okay. So the three topics that we picked as a group, we narrowed down was green engineer, renewable energy, and air pollution. Does that seem good for you guys? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So I want you to go stand by the chart paper that you think would be the most interesting to you. Um, but unfortunately, I was going to say you are only five. Um, so no more than three at a, at a chart paper, though. So you can leave one chart paper if you want to, leave it blank, and then Jaleen and Sandra can be in that group together. I'll go this way. Okay. Okay. Are you okay working by yourself until Jaleen or Sandra come? Yeah. Okay. All right. So what you're going to do is now, as a group, you pick the topic that most interested you, and then you are now going to research more into this topic. Okay? So I'm just take, taking a minute, and you do not have to go like in depth, like uh, think about fourth grade two. And so just get an overall um, research of, um, of your topic. You have a notepad on there as well. You can, uh, you know, start taking notes that you learn, um, or you can just uh, jot what you're what you're learning on your chart paper. If you want to bring it back down to a table, make that easier. You can just put all your notes on that chart paper instead. It's up to you. Okay.
So I'm going to give you guys, like, is 15 minutes too long for you? Is that too short? Well, let's start with 10, and then we will see where you guys are in your, uh, in your research part. Website just for it. Just for it. Just for action. Educational resources. located in the western U.S., Alaska, and Hawaii. Keep in mind our, our overarching question, too, of what can we do 
based on your topic or your subtopic, what can we do to keep our planet livable for future future generations related to your topic? So our focus is to come up with solutions to... It could be solutions, it could be um, what's going on now. What has been done, what, what they're trying. Time check is five minutes left. Do you need more time than that? No. Ish. Okay. We'll, we'll see at the end of the five minutes. I was like, he's working by himself. So. <laughs> the GT people? Okay. So there's one here that's called a question. I don't know. Wait, this. Well, here is the principal creature of bits of this called uh, waste prevention strategy. How are you guys doing with a three minute time check? You have three minutes left? Three minutes left. Okay. We're good. Okay. Nelson, you yeah. Yeah, we're good.
Essentially, if you're um, trying to move stuff around, it's not just the cost to make it, it's the cost to move it. Okay, so is the weighting rubbish the cost to make it? Mm -hmm. Like a minute and a half. Maybe you've got 16 minutes left, and then after that, you've got five. Okay. I'm going to have you guys come back to me in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so you guys did your research, you did your notes. Okay, you took some notes. Um, I know that some of you made um, notes through like a um, graphic organizer, which is fine. Some of you did notes on your on your um, device, which is fine, because the notes really are just for you for now. Okay, so the next part is going to be um, 
It should say, write, like, write a blueprint or a representation of how your group decided to save the planet related to your topic. Okay? So, again, it can be on the chart paper or on the um, legal pad that I gave you. I just want you to have some sort of representation, either a visual representation or write out a blueprint of um, how your group is going to save that planet, your planet, uh, related to that subtopic. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm just going to give you guys like a minute and a half, though, to do that. Got it? Okay. We're done. We're done. Utter destruction. So if they are putting out just carbon the way the stacks read it, they will get hit with a fine sometimes. Unless they buy carbon okay. credits from other companies. Back to me. Five, four, three, two, one. Next step is going to be you have to present. Okay, because you have your subtopic, we need to know what your plan is. So right now, in your groups, you're going to plan your presentation. You're not presenting yet, you're gonna plan your presentation. So I'm gonna give you guys, so just think about how you wanna start your presentation, what are you gonna include, who's gonna talk, uh, what are you gonna share, because your presentation is only going to be two to three minutes long. Okay, about your topic, your subtopic. Does that make sense? So talk in your group about how you're going to um, What's the flow of your presentation? Okay? And maybe you guys maybe like two minutes to talk and plan, because really your presentation is only going to be like two minutes long. Okay? Short presentation. So you guys have about 60 more seconds to kind of plan it out. Presenting your findings, okay, and then the class is going to act, ask any clarifying questions. So two to three minutes presentation, okay, um, and then normally in this, the teacher and the students would assess using a rubric based on time. Um, we're not going to do a rubric, but um, you can at, at your seats. What we can do is do just do a three, two, one, okay. Um, 
but that this part of it is important that the student, the other students, and the teacher is doing a, a completing a rubric based on um, the presentation to make sure that they have completed um, the, the the requirements. Okay, so who wants to go first? We'll go. Okay. Right here. Sounds great. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and people of the press. Um, we are here today to talk about our newest initiative, Green Engineering. We are going to begin implementing lean principles of action. I'd like to talk really quickly about those principles. We have eight of them. The first one is to produce only what is needed. The second one is to maintain levels of health and safety. Reduce unnecessary motion in production. Reduce excessive power used by eliminating extra processes in manufacturing. Reduce our carbon footprint of wasted material while we're manufacturing. Reduce our carbon footprint of transportation modes while we're manufacturing. Reduce our water usage while we're manufacturing. Reduce our production of defective material as well. Uh, we will be implementing these uh, initiatives immediately. We are monitoring our carbon footprint levels and we're using other methods to monitor our, to monitor our high levels of expectations. Um, if you have any questions, you can contact my associate, <laughs> Mr. Jeremy, for, for any other questions. Thank you. Okay, so we have some time. Any clarifying questions that um, the class would like to ask? Okay. Okay, who wants to go next? I heard Joe's Okay. <laughs> okay, so we did our research on renewable energy, and renewable energy is energy that's collected from renewable resources, and um, they have to be naturally replenished on a human timeline. Uh, some examples of renewable energy are sunlight, wind, rain, tides, waves, oops, and geothermal heat. I was like, what's the last one? It's one with the big box. Um, and according to the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, um, utilizing this type of resource could last billions of years. Billions with a B. Yes. Wow. <laughs> wow. So you may ask, what is geothermal heat? Uh, geothermal heat is heat from the earth, and we get it from things like hot water and steam. And one of the characteristics you find when you find the geothermal heat in certain areas, the surrounding areas generally stay between 50 and 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so they're still tolerable in there. And you can find them across the western United States and Alaska and Hawaii. Um, and the, the way you're able to get the geothermal heat is usually done by drilling. You drill down into the heat and try to pull up the steam with the hot water. Uh, it can be combined with other energy sources uh, to increase their effectiveness and what we're trying to do. And by doing that, we could cut down the use of fossil fuels, which is decreasing emissions or the air pollution, which then it will eventually help the plants grow better. Happy flowers. Happy flowers. Okay. Any clarifying questions for this group? Okay. Okay, so uh, in terms of air pollution, um, there's, uh, first of all, air pollution, is, it's a mixture of solid uh, particles and gases that are in the air, so things like car emissions, chemicals from factories, dust, pollens, mold spores, uh, all suspended in the atmosphere, that all contributes to air pollution. Uh, ozone gas is a major part of air pollution in cities, um, and some air pollutants are poisonous. Different types of air pollution exist, for example, indoor air pollution is something that's actually very hazardous to humans. Uh, along with uh, poor urban air quality, it's listed as one of the two mo most, uh, two worst toxic pollution problems in 2008 in the world. I have citations uh, I can point you to later. Um, and uh, there's also outdoor air pollution, which is usually what we think of when we think of air pollution. According to a report by the World Health Organization in 2014, Air pollution in 2012 caused the deaths of around 7 million people worldwide, and I guess that's annually. Uh, this estimate is roughly matched by the uh, a different estimate from a different uh, agency that's the International Energy Agency. There's two different types of air pollution. 
there's primary pollutants and then there's secondary pollutants. So primary pollutants are usually going to be produced from some sort of a process, like it could be ash coming out of volcanoes, uh, which is natural, but then also it could be carbon monoxide gas coming from motor vehicle exhaust or sulfur dioxide released from factories, things of that nature. Secondary pollutants uh, are not emitted directly, instead they're formed from primary pollutants.